What a day. And I was just thinking back to last week and uh, the, the Christmas day we had together. That was fun. It was such a treat, you know, being able to share the story with the kids up here on the platform. They got to eat cookies in front of everybody. It was really cool. We had a good time. It was just wonderful. And uh, thank you for all of you who came out and made that a part of your Christmas day. It was a blessing. I mentioned last week, for those of you who didn't know, the next time Christmas will be on a Sunday will be in 2033. Did you know that? 11 years before Christmas will hit on a Sunday again. Isn't that crazy? But with leap year and how that all falls together, it, it puts it out 11 years before it'll fall on a Sunday again. And the really cool part about that is that in 2023, that's our 100th anniversary as a church. Yeah, pretty neat thing. We'll celebrate that one for sure. So exciting days. Uh, anyway, if you are interested in that Mexico trip coming up, I, I'm excited about that. We're, I'm excited because we're actually, well, I'm excited because we're going. But I'm also excited because we're actually taking two different tracks this year. One is going to be building, but the other one is going to be working with the children. We're going to be doing like a vacation Bible school with the kids that are there and having some, for those who want to be involved in that. So ladies or, or gentlemen, if you're not a builder type, but you love working with kids and you want to do that, it's not all about construction. There's other stuff that we'll be doing. I have a gentleman who's going to be going, and he just wants to work in the kitchen. He loves working in the kitchen. He's going to go, and he wants to just help the cooks that they hired to, uh, to cook. And so he's going to be in the kitchen working, and he wants to step over and help the kids during VBS. So exciting things. If you're interested in that, I'd encourage you to come to the meeting, hear about it, see if it's something that fits who you are and what you might be wanting to do, and uh, if the time frame fits your, your schedule and all that. So we'd love to have you come out on Friday night. All right? So here we are. It's 2023 already. I can't believe it. How many of you would agree 2022 just blew by? It went by so fast. It was really pretty much crazy. And we're kicking off this, uh, this 2023 season in our lives here and uh, just excited about what God has for us. I'm excited for where the Lord is going to be taking us this year because I have a real sense in my heart that we're going to be seeing the Lord uh, begin to give us vision for outreach within our communities. And I, I'm just excited about that because how many of you know that outreach is about the lost, isn't it? And we need to reach the lost. Isn't that what Christ told us before he left? Go ye. That was the last words he said was go. So it's all about the lost. So I'm excited about that. But when we start off a new year, it's always good, isn't it? It's always fun. We love it because more than any other time of the year, we take time and we evaluate our lives. How many even say that you take stock as we cross over into the new year every time? Most times. Sometimes. You did it once back in 1940, right? <laughs> okay. Some of us do. And we evaluate our lives and we often ask things like, um, in 2022, did I reach my goals in, in my life for this year that I had? Or, or maybe we ask ourselves, what do I need to change about myself in 23? Or, or what can I do better? Or uh, maybe the one a lot of us need to ask is, what can I stop doing? Wow, we got really quiet on that one right? Um, uh, maybe I need to do the gym again, this time for more than two weeks. We'll go for three weeks this year, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, we look backwards to see how we can look ahead, don't we? And when you think about it, though, most of the time as believers in Christ, here's the thing, we, we don't, mm -mm, we won't, mm, maybe we haven't ever evaluated our faith journeys from last year and looked at what God has for us in terms of faith journey goals for next year. Oh, and we haven't done that. Some of us maybe do, but some of us haven't done that maybe in a long time. For most, for most of us, I would say it's because we tend to be content with where we are and, and we feel that we really can't do any more than we've already done. We can't get any better in our faith than we already are. And we feel like the best days that we've had in our walks with God are behind us. 
Now, I know that stepped on a few toes, and I'm sorry. Hmm, maybe not. Sometimes we need our toes stomped on, don't we? Indeed we do. And, and the mindset that I just said, that the best days are behind us, is not the mindset that I think pleases the Lord, do you? I don't think it does. Because there is something about the days ahead that God always has for us. What I want to show you today is, is that you shouldn't let your memories be bigger than your dreams. Think about that statement. We should never let our memories, the things we've done before today, be bigger than the dreams that God is giving us for tomorrow. And yet many, many, many of us get stuck in our memories. And, and it's a, a thing we, we have to fight against. Today I've titled this message, Reset in 2023. Because I think sometimes we have to literally try to stop and change and get a reset in our lives in, in the new year. And, and the first thing we need to understand is that God says to us, I want you to forget the past. Forget what happened in your past. Forget what went on. Forget the things behind you and look ahead to what's ahead of you. Because He wants us to see what He has, not what we have had in our past. In fact, if you look over in Isaiah chapter 43, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there today. If you don't, it'll be on the screen here. In Isaiah chapter 43, in verse 18, we see where God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. And here's what he said to the, to the people. He said, but the Lord says, do not cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Do not dwell on the things of the past. Cling to the past. Hanging to what happened before or what happened so long ago in your life. That is what he's calling us to. Living in the past is something that a lot of us do. As a pastor, you'd be amazed how many times I talk to people who, who can only talk about the things that have happened in the past. They're not looking to what God might do in their lives in the future. It's amazing to me how many of us are there. You know, social media, for all of its downsides, is also a plus side because it gives us the opportunity to connect with people from our past. You know, people that maybe we went to high school with or people we went to college with. Or, or for me as a pastor, I've been in six different churches with my wife and, and uh, we have people that we have been able to reconnect with from each of those churches prior to social media. The connections were very slim and we've been able to do that. And so there's a lot of good in social media, but it is very enlightening to what people put on social media. Would you agree with me on that one? I was observing social media the last year or so, and I remember running across some of the folks that I went to college with, and, and some of their posts were declaring that those four years at Bible college were the best years of my life ever. And I was like, wow, really? 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 College was a long time ago, for starters. It was, you know, 30 or 40 years ago. And so I'm thinking from that point until now, there's been nothing better than the college days. It broke my heart to think that between now and then, they had not seen God do greater things in their lives or move forward in the dreams. And no offense meant to my friends from college, but it was a fun years, and I enjoyed them. But I am, I am so excited for the years since college, to be honest with you. I love my life since college. I mean, I've got an amazing wife. I've got three incredible kids, seven amazing grandchildren, and a few more to come, I'm sure. Just for starters, but then you start counting all of the people who we have been able to minister to, the thousands of people over the years in all of the churches we've been in, in the communities we've been in, who maybe weren't even in our church, but we were able to speak into their lives. All of that... All of that in our lives is so amazing, is so fun, and so uh, incredible that God gave me that opportunity and put it before me to be able to do that. And as I continue to walk out my faith journey, I see He continue to do that in my life. I cannot help but think about how great that is and how much God is using me. You know, college was fun, but oh my goodness, I'm living in and I'm looking ahead to the best days of my life, to be honest with you. I am so excited about what God continues to do. I'm excited about Lebanon First Assembly. I'm excited about what God is going to do here. You know, these are the best days of what ahead. Yes, God's done great things in my life. 
No doubt, I'm super excited about all of that, but I believe the best days are ahead, don't you? In your life. But here's the thing. So many times people don't feel that way. So what are some reasons people give for living in the past? Some reasons people live for only looking backwards. I want to share with you a couple of different reasons today. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know that you necessarily need to write these down because you're going to be like, there's going to be one or two. You're like, oh, yeah, well, that was me, right? But there are some reasons people give for living in the past. The first would be, I've had a really good past. I lived a really good life. And, and for some people, that may be very true. They love the Lord. They've had business. They've They've done a lot of different things, and God has used them in mighty ways, and, and that's really great, and, and that's very big, and, you know, a lot of accomplishments that they may have taken care of in their lives, and you may feel there's no way that the future is ever going to be as good as the past was. And so you settle for remembering the glory days of the past. But how many of you know that God is not a God of the glory days of the past? Because He has greater things are yet to come. You know, some of us may be thinking, you know, high school was incredible. I was a football star, or maybe I was a standout vocalist in my school or in the band, or I was, I was a straight-A student. We think about those days. For others, it may be college that we thought about it. It was really good in our lives. Or for others, it may be our early careers and our businesses when life was going a way that we thought. Those are really good things, and, and we hold on to those, and we think, you know, I'm not going to be looking ahead, because I had a really good life, a really good past. But con conversely, let me just say that the, some of the people who have given a reason for living in the past is, they say, I've really had a bad past. Things have really not gone well for me. And I would say a lot of people fall into that category. Some of you have had a really bad past. Maybe you were abused as a child. Others of you may have suffered through tragic events, both personally or, or that devastated you publicly or maybe humiliated you or maybe you, you had some horrible things that happened in your life and, and uh, you, you may have felt that, that a positive future is an impossibility for you. Maybe you went through a divorce and then you, you uh, had a child die away or uh, pass away or maybe you were uh, an addicted to some, some substances or, or maybe you got fired from your dream job and, or maybe your family disowned you. You know, and all of those things are very real and very true in so many people's lives. And, and while I don't say that those are not devastating, I do say that that is the past and God has greater things for you ahead. Sometimes people say, for living in the past, they say things like, I'm too old now. I'm too old. <laughs> my dad's chuckling. <laughs> Never tell my dad you're too old to get involved for Christ. At, uh, at 84 years old, and uh, he doesn't believe that there's retirement as a believer in Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe it. The fact that your life seems almost over or you have ser serious maybe physical limitations in your life or you, you, may, you may assume that uh, you're looking to the past as your only option, but the reality is, is I want to show you that many people have accomplished great things in the later years of their life. Many people continue to do things. And you know, you, you may have physical issues and, and I understand that, or you may have other things going on and I understand that. But there is something that God can do through you in your future, depending on your availability. How many of you know God does not need your abilities? He only needs you to be available. When I think of older people achieving some great things, let me just list off a few of them for you that I ran across on the Internet. At 71, Katsuki, oh my goodness, I'm going to say this, Yanagisawa, a retired Japanese school teacher, became the oldest person to ever climb Mount Everest at 71. At 72, Margaret Ringenberg flew solo around the world in a plane. At 75, cancer survivor Barbara Hillary became one of the oldest people and the first black woman to ever reach the North Pole. At 77, John Glenn, we all know him, became the oldest person to go back into space or to go into space. At 82, William Ivy Baldwin, he, he walked a tightrope across 320-foot canyon in Colorado at 82. How many of you 82 plusers? You think, think about that. Some of you are like, I can't even walk to the restroom. What are you talking about? 
At 88, Michelangelo designed a massive cathedral at 88 years of age. At 91, Alan Stewart received a law degree from the University of New England at 91. At 92, Paul Spangler finished his 14th marathon. Now, that is a man I do not necessarily aspire to be like. Any marathon runners in this place? Not me, right? At 93, P.G. Wodehouse worked on his 97th novel and was knighted by the Queen of England. And at 100, Frank Shearer still water skied regularly. You know, and those all seem like amazing feats, but I'm just trying to illustrate that no matter your age or your abilities, you can still be doing something, right? But let me talk to you scripturally. Out of the heroes of the faith within our Bible uh, that we see that are in some of their seasoned years, let me just say that 120 years of age, Moses passed the leadership off to Joshua before they entered the promised land. So he led the Israelites till 120. In his 90s, the apostle John wrote the book of Revelation. At 110, Abraham was willing to offer his only son Isaac in obedience to God who had asked him to do so. And thankfully, God provided a lamb in the bush. Amen? At 104, there's a very obscure reference in the book of Luke to a woman by the name of Anna. She was 104 years old. And in the book of Luke, you'll see that she prophesies over the baby Jesus. All of these people didn't allow their memories, their past, their accomplishments to be bigger than their dreams and their future of what God had for them. Others in the Bible overcame a lot of bad history, a lot of moments that, you know, if you think you had a bad past, I mean, let's talk about Rahab. Rahab, who was a prostitute in a foreign land, who helped the spies, who became a part of the lineage of the Son of God. Your bad past cannot necessarily, it will not keep you from what God has for you. Or you think of David, King David. We think of him as such a great man, and he was a great man, and he was a God after man, man after God's own heart, who also was an adulterer and who killed the husband of the woman he had adultery with. And yet, God continued to use him. Or we think of Mary Magdalene, who was a prostitute. We think of Peter, who walked with Christ, who stood by his side, who vowed to always protect him. No one will hurt you. I will die for you, only to deny him in the hour of of an amazing stress in his life when Christ was being tried. See, they didn't let their memories of the past hold them back from what the Lord wanted them to do in their futures. God has great things for us regardless of our age, doesn't he? Thank you. God has great things for us. Your dreams, your memories should never be larger than your dreams. Never be larger. The, The ability to look ahead to your dreams is to forget the past failures. And so we have to ask the question is, are we, am I focused on my past or am I focused on my future? See, the thing I want you to realize is that your memories shape who you are today, right? Your dreams will shape who you're going to be tomorrow. You realize that? Think about that for a minute. Your memories shape who you are today, how you come to be. Who who I am today is based on the choices and the things that I decided in my life to do. That's my past. But my future is shaped by living out the dreams before my Lord. Amen? It's important to let not let your memories be greater than your dreams. And I think that's where a lot of us as believers get stuck. That's where a lot of us fall into this trap of, of thinking that my past is, is the best it's ever going to be. And I have to tell you, it's not. Your memories represent your past, and your past shaped who you are today, but your dreams represent your future and who God wants you to be down the road. Our dreams expand and shape us into who we're going to become. Our dreams are a gift because they impact our life as you try to achieve them. Moving forward in your faith journeys. 
Your dreams are so important to pay attention to, so important to walk out in our lives. And we've got to be hearing from God. We've got to be willing to listen. See, a memory won't change your life today, but a dream will. As you get excited. Your dream is why you choose to maybe go to the gym for two weeks every new year. <laughs> Three now. <laughs> Your, your dream is why you set goals in life. Your dream is, is, is easily, oh, excuse me, you could easily waste a decade of your life focusing on your past, but if you take the time and you envision your dream and you set the goals to reach what God has put before you, then you can begin to walk in your future. You see, your future is determined by your dreams. We have to start dreaming again, don't we? We have to start allowing God to use us in our futures. Our past is there and it's fantastic for some. It's horrible for others, but it's our past. What does God, God have next for you? Don't get me wrong. We need to take time to enjoy and reflect and taking stock of what God has done in our lives. There's nothing wrong with that. But then we need to move ahead and look forward and focus on the dream, the plan of what you'll do in your future because God has something greater for you and that would be a great place for an amen. God has something more amazing for you than you could imagine if you would begin to hear from Him and be willing to respond to what He has for you. Let's look at what the Apostle Paul said. If you've got your Bibles, turn over to Philippians chapter 3 today. I want to look at Philippians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 12 and, and uh, a few after that. Apostle Paul, we know, had a lot of things going on. He was involved with a lot of things. But he says in verse 12 of 3, Not that I have already obtained all of this, or that I have already arrived at my goal, but, everybody say these next three words with me, I press on to take a hold of that which is Christ, which is for Christ Jesus, what he took a hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it. But one thing I do, here's what he says, one thing I do, you ready for this? Here's what he says, forgetting what is behind, pressing forward to what is ahead. I press on to the goal, to the win the prize for which God has called me to heavenward in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what is behind, pushing forward to what is ahead. And how many of us have stopped? And here's Paul. Let's just face it. Paul had some pretty good days before writing all this, don't you think? Paul had some amazing days. He was, he was one who had, had Christ reveal himself to him. He had, he had spoken to both uh, kings and emperors as well as to the, the slaves. He had audiences with all of them. He was responsible for bringing the gospel and, and revival to most of the Roman world that we know of. Paul put together three full missionary journeys to help spread the gospel, many shipwrecks and many different things, and he was beaten and he was stoned and he was, he was left for dead numerous times suffering for the gospel. Here's a man who had a lot of great things that God had done through him in his past. True? And yet here he is writing to the church in Philippi, from a prison cell. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited, he says. Forgetting all of those things that I've already done. Setting those all aside. They're, they're wonderful things. I'm putting them all aside, and I'm going to continue to press on to the goal, to the dreams that God has for me toward heaven. I'm going to continue to march forward. I'm going to continue to move towards that goal. Why? Because there are greater things yet ahead to be done. And Paul knew this. He had all of those experience in his past, and yet he says, I don't consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it. God wants me to accomplish is yet ahead of me. Let me just say this today. If the Apostle Paul feels like his past had not yet accomplished it, how, how dare we even think to say that our past has done all that we need to be doing and we're done we can't. We certainly have not accomplished all that God has for us. Have we? No, we have not. 
So let me ask the question and help answer the question. Some of you are thinking, how? How do I begin to live the dream then that maybe God puts before me? How do I do that? And there are some very simple things that we can begin to do in our lives that help us because so many times we aren't even seeing the dream because we're so busy looking at the past. How do I begin to live that dream? It's time to leave some things behind, don't you think? It's time to set some things behind. You may have had a bad experience in this church or a previous church or in your life or in your family or at your work or something. It's time that you set it aside and let it go. We all have someone that's mishurt us or mistreated us. An unforgiving heart is always going to live in the past. i got to tell you that right now. Last year, we started off the year of 2020 with Steve Deal, who was here, and he spoke on forgiveness, and then we did a seminar that afternoon on forgiveness and how to en envelop that in our lives and live it out and let go of those things in our past. And I know many of you were affected by that, and many of you were transformed by that. But I know others of us walked away feeling like we could never let go of the hurts that we have. You have to leave things behind you. You've got to leave your resentments behind you. Many times we have resentments in our life. We have things that have happened to us that have hurt us. And we have to be willing to let go of those because unforgiveness is the poison we drink thinking it's going to hurt the person we want it to hurt. And it makes no sense whatsoever because unforgiveness is in our lives, it creates a root of bitterness in our lives and it begins to destroy us from the inside out. It is just a foothold the enemy can get in there and he will destroy you from the inside out. You've got to leave your resentment behind. How do I begin to live the dream? You leave your worries behind. And I know many worriers. Any worriers in the house? Some of you are worried about raising your hand right now. You're a worrier. All right, let's just call it what it is. Oh, maybe, mm, I'm not going to say that. Well, what will he think? You worry about that, right? Worries are a lot like rocking chairs. They give you something to do, but they really don't get you anywhere. Habitual worry is a life-controlling problem, and it damages your health. It damages your relationships. It damages everything that you could want to do when all you do is become consumed in worry. You need to leave your worries behind. How do I begin to live the dream? You leave your failures behind. Anybody ever had a failure in your life so far? No? Okay, six of us. Thank you. The rest of you, you're just saints. I'm so proud of you. We get discouraged because we fail, don't we? But have we really failed in God's eyes? No. God is the God of new beginnings. He's the God of new starts. If we ask he will give us a clean slate to begin once again, even in 2023. Anybody like redos when you play games as a kid? I want to do over, right? You roll the dice. It was a bad dice. Can I do it again, please? I need a redo. And of course, if you're a hardcore gamer like me, you're like, no, no redo. No, we aren't doing that. God's not like me, right? God gives the redos. He gives the do-overs. Thank goodness for that. I needed a few of those in my own life. Most of us would love a start over, a do over in our lives. And Christ offers that to us, doesn't he? How do you begin to live the dream? Here's another one. You leave the guilt behind. So many times we become consumed. We get consumed by the guilt in our lives. We become overwhelmed with that in our lives. You, you begin to feel unworthy. You begin to feel inadequate in who you are and what's going on in your life. But see, Christ in you is the hope of glory, isn't he? I'm going to say that again because it's not about you. It's Christ in you is the hope of glory, right? Christ in you. It's the key to God's amazing future for you. It's all about putting your trust, your hope, your faith, your life into the hands of Jesus Christ. And he's walking in your life and living out your faith journey with you as a new creation. He said, it's new every two weeks, right? Every morning. His mercies are new every morning. It means it started today, 2023. It began again today. Thank you, I agree. Yay, I'm with you. Tomorrow it'll start again for you. 
leaving the guilt behind. You've got to set the guilt aside in your life. So many times we think we can't. We aren't able. We failed again. We can never measure up. We're failures in God's eyes. And let me tell you something. You are a new creation in Christ. You could never be a failure. He loves you. No matter how many times you fall and fail, He loves you. There isn't anything that you can do that will make God love you less. And there isn't anything that you can do that will make God love you more. He loves you that much already. You can't affect His love in any way for you. He loves you. Let me illustrate this idea of leaving all of this behind and trusting in Him as the one who is in charge of our lives this way. I ran across a story, and I want to share it with you. It's a a famous violinist who announced that he was going to do a concert on a $1 million Stradivarius violin. And everybody heard this, and they were like, I would love to hear this amazing virtuoso playing the violin on a million-dollar, how-many-year-old Stradivarius violin. The night came, the concert hall was sold out, tickets were sold out, the the violins began to play the violin. The music was sweet. The violin began to cry like a little baby. It sang like a bird, it laughed like a child. Oh, it was amazing. The crowd was overwhelmed by the sound that night in the concert. And they said things like, did you ever hear such music? What a priceless violin. That is amazing. And when the thunderous applause died down, the violinist, he took the violin and he turned around and he smashed it to pieces on a chair sitting near him. Everybody was shocked. Everybody was aghast. They said, he's crazy. He's mad. Why would you break a million dollar, hundreds year old violin? Stradivarius, that is so insane. I cannot believe he did that. The violinist reached behind him and he pulled out another violin. He smiled and said, ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't a $1 million violin. It was a $50 fiddle. He says, this is how a million dollar violin sounds. And he began to play. And he began to move the bow. The music wasn't any sweeter than it was before. And he continued to play through the concert. And when he was finished playing, he asked the crowd, he says, do you know why this was no better than the other one? He said, it's because it's not the violin. It's the person who draws the bow that makes the music. It's the person in your life, God, who makes the difference of how sweet your sound is. Doesn't matter whether you're the $50 fiddle or the million dollar Stradivarius. If God is pulling the bow, music is going to be the sweetest it ever could be when you submit to that. It's not what you can do. It's not the abilities and talents you have. It's about what God can do through you. It's allowing God to use your abilities with your availability. So how do I begin to live the dream? It's simple. You seize the opportunities before you. It's that simple. Each one. Today, you may seize an opportunity. You may see an opportunity to share Christ. Is that the dream? There you go. That somebody needed a good word, an encouraging word. That may be it. The minute you step out of that door, right there, someone may need that, and that may be the next dream God had for you is to share that with somebody and to love on them. It may be seizing the opportunities placed before you. The individual who knocks on your door, who you never anticipated knocking on your door, that you have a chance to show kindness to. See, each new year, God gives us new opportunities in our faith journeys to work for Him, to live for Him, to walk out our faith before Him in advance of the kingdom, to win souls for Him, to move the church of Christ forward. And if we are not seizing the opportunities that God puts before us, then I would say shame on us. If we are not taking those moments people put before that God puts before us in people's lives, 
Shame on us for not doing that. The question we have to ask ourselves is, are we willing to run with the opportunities that God puts before us? The dreams He allows us to see, the things that He allows us to do. Are we willing to run with them and do what God puts before us to do? You know, I loved baptizing today. Shauna was wonderful, amazing. God is doing a work in her life. If you ever get a chance to sit down and hear her story, do. It's amazing what God is doing in her life. And yet, why didn't we have four or five or six or ten on this stage giving their testimony? Dare I say that they might have, if you might have invited that one that you felt like you should have, but you didn't, to church this year. Dare I say that you had an opportunity to speak into someone's life that may have been the difference maker for them that you shied away from? God puts things in our way. Are we willing to step into those things and trust that he will take us through them? That's the big question. That's the thing we have to realize. 2023 can be an amazing year for us, and we can look around and see most of the same faces next at the end of next year. Or we can see more in this place when we start stepping out and reaching those who are around us that God puts in our way with a simple word, a kind word, an invitation, sharing a scripture to someone who needs hope. There's so many things we could do. And you're like, well, what, what is there? How do I do this? How do I, how do I step out and begin to live out the dream God puts before me? What, what can I do for Christ this year that's going to make a difference? Let me give you some very simple things that any one of us could do at different times, depending on where we're at and who we are. And then maybe you could consider this my challenge for you this year. To set out some godly faith journey goals for your life. You, will you receive that? Some faith journey goals for your life in 2023. Faith journey goals for my life in 2023. Because I believe they're just as much for me as they are for you. So here's one. Maybe you could determine to be a better witness for Christ. Maybe you could, and you're like, I don't know how to be a witness for Christ. I don't know, that's scary to me. Well, you know, there is a small group starting this coming Wednesday called Sharing My Faith. That might help you get past some of that or give you some tools to be able to do that. Just a thought. Hmm. You're like, Pastor, you meddled, stomped on my toes and gave me a solution. Stop it, please. All right? Maybe another way is you could develop a more Christ-like nature, allowing the fruit of the Spirit to be seen in your life in individuals allowing the gifts of the Spirit to function that God has given to you, to function within your life, out and about, or, or wherever He is using that. You just simply need to ask God. Or another one would be grow in the Word. You know, grow in the Word. You need to maybe read the Word. I loved what Shauna said. said. She goes, I'm reading this Word, and it's like everything is popping out at me. It's like speaking to my life, and, and then doggone it, that preacher preaches on it the next week. I don't know, this is crazy. I hear it spoken to me. Memorize some of this in your life. Commit it to memory so that it becomes not just something you've heard, but something you internalize and know. You know, you can get involved in some small groups and allow the, 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 the new small groups coming to challenge you in the Word. You know, we have one on the book of Romans coming up. Fantastic study. And another one that's going on right now on Sundays uh, in the book of Hebrews. Uh, like I told you, there's, there's, the, uh, there's the sharing my faith. There's another one on Wednesday nights that's, that's Bible Backroads in the book of Matthew, looking at the, the places and things that took place around the writing of the book of Matthew. Get involved somewhere. Grow in the Word. You're like, oh, I don't read too much. Come, be a part of a conversation. How many of you know that being in a small group is, is like Christ-like, right? Because they met in houses. They met in small groups and fellowshiped and encouraged one another. It's a part of the way God wants us to grow. You can increase your prayer life and your prayer ministry. I've, I've mentioned to you, next Sunday we're going to start a week of prayer. Commit to this week, not this week, but the next week, joining us, that each day you will set aside about at least 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, read through the devotional, and there are some prayer points that we're going to have on there that you can be praying about, asking God to do. Just commit a little time to start a new habit in your life. Let Him challenge you in your faith journey. Let Him help you in your walk with Him. 
determined to get closer to God this year than you've ever been before. Make a commitment to that. Make a commitment to be involved in ways you've never been involved before. Let this be a transformational year in 2023 in your life at Lebanon First Assembly. You guys are a rousing crowd. Mm. Okay. I'm wrapping up. Here's seven things that you could choose to do every day. Simple things any one of us could do. You could focus on a heart passion. Very simple. Focus on a heart passion. Not on maybe if you're an appearance person. Don't worry about your appearance. Focus on a heart passion. Something that moves you in your heart. Maybe speak positively rather than the negative person. How many of you love when you walk into a room and there's a person who just always compliments? You like being around people who always just, I mean, not false compliments, but just they, they speak good things into your life. You like those kind of people, don't you? Conversely, how many of you enjoy stepping into a room next to an individual that is the negative Nelly? Most of us do not, do we? Be the positive person. Don't be the negative person. Here's another thing you could do. Very simple. Find someone to compliment every day. Just a simple compliment. Just one thing. Just start with one person. Create a new habit. Here's another thing you could do. Do do random acts of kindness in your life. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe that neighbor needs their lawn mowed and they're not feeling well. Maybe maybe somebody else is is hurting and, and just needs someone to encourage them. Find a random moment of kindness and do it for someone. Or, or volunteer. Volunteer somewhere. Get involved in something, whether it's here at the church or at the storehouse or uh, involved in a soup kitchen somewhere or, or get, get involved in, and serve a widow out there somewhere who needs some help with something. Or maybe a single mom. How many of you know single moms sometimes need a break? Right? Here's another one any of us can do. Be grateful. Oh, that's so hard, Pastor. You have no idea. No, be grateful. Be grateful. Name one thing every day that you're going to be grateful for. Just pick one. Write it down. Stick it on the mirror so that you see it every morning when you go into your restroom to get ready for the day. I'm grateful for blah, whatever it is. Be grateful. The last one is reach out. How many of you know sometimes somebody just needs a call that says, I care? I care. Or a text. I love you. How are you doing today? I care about you. I appreciate you. You're amazing. It's not like a two hour conversation, it's just a very simple way of saying, I care. So let me wrap this up today. All right, here we are in 2023. Let me wrap this up by saying, I've given a lot of things for you maybe to act on or to consider or to do. Some great scriptures to lean into and and to try to implement into your lives. A few amazing examples of people who maybe are a little older than us who still have found that there were things that they could do in their lives. But let me illustrate the problem with a message like this today. Okay? And I'm going to illustrate it with a really simple story. There was a, a young boy he was out in the country, this country boy, he and, his, he and his daddy were sitting out there, and he said, Dad, if three frogs were sitting on a, on a limb that hung over a pool of water, and one frog decided to jump off into the pool, how many frogs would there be left on the limb? And the dad said, well, that's easy, there's two. And the son said, no. Let me say it again, Dad, there's three frogs One decides to jump. How many are left? And the dad said, oh, I get it, I get it. So if one jumps, all three decide to go. They're going to follow their friends. So there's none. And the little boy says, no, dad, the answer is three. See, the frog only decided to jump. He never took the leap off the branch. You know, we have many things before us today that have been shared. Many things that in the new year we can choose to do. New gym memberships, new dietary plans, new this, new reading plans. We have a lot of things we can intend to do. We decide to do some things, but until we do them, we've never really done them, have we? Does that sound like last year's resolutions? Great inspirations, great resolutions, great intentions, 
but we only decided to do it. Months later, we're still sitting on that same limp and never limb and never took a leap to do what we said we were going to do. That's my challenge today. Maybe last year didn't turn out the way that you had hoped it would. Let's start 2023 and put 2022 behind us. Make the fresh leap. Don't just decide, but do what God has for you to do. Father, today, in this moment, in this time, in this message that I believe you gave me to share, I pray, God, that we can find something that we can do. It doesn't have to be a extravagant, amazing. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. But find one thing that we can begin to put into our life, that in our faith journey, that can change who we are becoming today. With your heads bowed in this place, I just want to ask the question. You may be saying to yourselves, you know, I'm living in my past memories, Pastor. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm living in the fact that what's happened in my past is bigger than my dreams, and I don't like it. It's time for action. It's time for change in my life. It's time to commit to begin to grow in ways I've never grown before and listen to God's dreams on my heart, but not just listen to them. I actually have to act on them. And Pastor, can you pray that I would begin to act on them today? that I would not wait anymore, that I would write them down, I would commit to them, and I would begin to do them. And if that's you and I can pray for you today, I would love for you just to raise your hand right where you're at. Yeah, that's me. Thank you. Is there others that say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Hands going up all over the place. I see those. Thank you. Is there others that say, yeah, Pastor, I am all about that, and I would just love some encouragement today as I take that next step in my life. Father, you saw those hands. You see the hearts more than the hands. And I'm so thankful, God, that you see that and you understand that and you're willing to touch us. God, you have sparked something in us. But God, it requires us to move on it. We can see the thing, but we have to act on the thing. So God, I pray that you will move us off the limb of indecision and get us into the pond. Help us to take the leap and move to where you have for us to move. God, to do what you have for us to do, to step into the areas that you have been challenging us to do. Even if it's one small step, it begins with one small step. For someone else, it may be a larger step. It may be something else. Whatever it is, God, I pray that you will help us to take that step today. To be who you want us to be in 2023. Let us leap rather than just decide.